Hello everybody, my name is Sophie and welcome back to another video. Colleen Hoover is a force of nature. She is a force to be reckoned with. She is almost like the best author of our generation. At least that's what people try to tell you. Don't believe them. I've had the pleasure or discomfort of reading the Holy Trinity self-proclaimed Holy Trinity of Colleen Hoover books. Ugly Love, It Ends With Us, and Verity. People will probably suggest those three to you. And now, finishing Verity last night, I can confidently say I've read them. And I never have to think of her again. It's obviously not true. She is uh, omnipresent. And she's always up to something and she needs to s just, you know, quit it. I have done reviews on Ugly Love and It Ends With Us and I've also done a deep dive podcast episode on Colleen Hoover. I'll link them down below if you want to watch them because I'm not going to be talking about her fugly... No, that's mean. Her dumbass. <laughs> I'm not going to be talking about that today because I usually give like background on the author before I talk about the book but since we're on the third book of hers I think we all know. We all know she needs to quit. This book is being turned into a movie. This was confirmed by Colleen Hoover herself during the press tour for It Ends With Us. She said, yes, queen, it's being turned into a movie and we're having casting talks and next week. So this week, so whatever week you're watching this, it's not going to be that week, except you're watching it in release, video release week. Hmm. Everyone in the comments of that TikTok where she said this was saying, oh my god. I need a Verity to be played by Rosamund Pike. You guys are so uncreative. Let's just take the bitch that played uh, Gone Girl. Because that's also a thriller. If one actor plays one role, they should play that role in every movie that it's like, like similar to. Apparently, allegedly, according to TikTok comments. Okay, if I had to rank the three books, I would put Ugly Love as the worst, then I put Verity, and then I put with it. Uh, actually, would I? I think Ugly Love was definitely the worst one, writing wise, content wise. Honestly, I think I'm gonna put It Ends With Us and Verity on the second place <laughs> together. They can share the silver medal. They were bad for, for different reasons, and we'll talk about them. Before I talk about the book more specifically, I want to thank my members, my book haters, my boo-boos. My book haters get my videos a day before they release. They also get to vote on my next reads. Not this one though. I decided myself. I, I took liberty because I'm the president of the book hater club. They also get exclusive content such as my ruby red movie commentary, cool stickers, and my eternal peace and love. Mm -hmm. And we do have a new member and of course I'm giving everyone a shout out, but I want to shout you out specifically queen. I don't know if you're a queen or a king or whatever you want to be, you know? I don't discriminate. Alice underscore online has become a member. Thank you for joining. Ah, uh, no, maybe it's Alice. What did I say? A Alice? Because it's two A's. <laughs> I just love that we're getting more book haters on board. Official book haters, because everyone's a, everyone who's watching is a book hater. I tricked you. So what is Verity about? First of all, it has 2 million reviews on Goodreads. Have you ever seen a book? Probably, but there's a lot of books that have over a million reviews probably, but Verity is one of them. It has almost 3 million ratings actually, 250,000 reviews and a 4.3 average on Goodreads, which is good. I tried to pull that average down single-handedly by rating the book one star and I wrote scariest thing in this book was the writing because it's the truth. It is a thriller. Yeah, it's a thriller. I'm glad that um, Colleen Hoover was the one to like take my thriller virginity. Low key, before I started reading it, I had someone in real life tell me like, have you read Verity? And I said, no bitch. Why the fuck would I ever do that? And also people uh, online ask me to read Verity, have you read Verity? And then people on TikTok who are of course Colleen Hoover fans, and by the way, you can like whatever you like, I have, I have to make a disclaimer. You can like whatever you like, I like things that you don't like, but Verity is objectively bad and so is every single Colleen Hoover book and also she's heavily problematic. So if you like Colleen Hoover, peace and love, like, I'm not gonna call you out, but I don't wanna fuck with you. Sorry. You're still welcome to watch this video, of course. And maybe realize that Colleen Hoover is a 
she can't write <laughs> it's so frustrating because as i was trying to say there were people online trying to say i don't even think colleen hoover wrote verity because it's so different from her other books and it's just so good and it's verity is so suspenseful and good and you don't know what the truth is which is why it says in the back because verity also means truth yeah the writing was just like every other Colleen Hoover book. I'm not sure what you guys were like or what the people online were trying to convey or who lied to them. Not every work of art has to be good. Bad art is allowed to exist. This is bad art. Um, arguably, it shouldn't exist either though. I think Colleen Hoover has no right to have a position in the publishing sphere. Oh man, it's just that I think Colleen Hoover's writing is so bad. It's so bad. The, and you would think that for someone who's published a lot of books in her career, and arguably successful books in her career, she would know like the difference between words and would know like I'm gonna cry literary devices, but it appears that she does not know any of this. It appears that the people around her don't want her to know. They're with withholding this information from her. They don't want her to find out how to write a proper book. And it's just so confusing to me. And I think that I do need to look at how she became really famous. Like, I need to examine that closer because it's such a ridiculous thing. And she does not deserve the position she is in for the kind of writing that she does, in my opinion. Because she just, you know... I could do it better. <laughs> Listen, I could. Because I was writing like her when I was 14. No, make it 12. When I was 12 on Wattpad writing about Harry Styles. And I think people who like Colleen Hoover were never active on Wattpad or AO3. Let's get into the book. Already was first published in 2018. We will be talking about a bonus chapter at the end of the actual review that was released in 2022. Keep it in mind, four years apart from the bonus chapter and the first release of the book as far as i'm concerned what i could figure out what is verity about it's about this girly pop her name is lowen and lowen is an author of suspense novels as she likes to call it herself she is not a good author apparently but good enough and she's broke as fuck and so because she's broke as fuck when she gets the offer to a uh, ghost ride for an author who's in a coma allegedly or whatever called Verity, she agrees because she's broke and she's gonna get half a million dollars for three books. She agrees to this, moves into the house with Verity, Verity's husband and her son, and uncovers the truth about Verity and everything regarding this family and ends up fucking the husband. The end. That's a summary. But how does it actually start? Well, unhingedly, <laughs> our main character lives in New York. I don't know where Colleen Hoover lives, but she's probably been to New York. <laughs> it's such a weird opening because Owen, the main character, is on her way to the meeting where she's going to be told all of this. And she watches a dude get driven over by a car and his head explodes on her. And she has blood on her from the head explosion. I'm not sure why this is the introduction to the book because it has no relevance to the rest of the book. It gets brought up until maybe 20% in, and then never again. <laughs> so I don't know why she did it. It was unnecessary, but this is already where she meets Jeremy, which is the husband, who she's gonna later fuck. Don't worry, we'll talk about it. I know you're excited. Yes, clean Hoover sex scenes, love. She also makes it seem like New York is the worst city to ever live in and that this is just casual, that people, people's heads just explode on the street by getting driven over like every single day and no one is really faced by this. And she mentions the word phone around like six times just in this introduction because I was, I was so confused by it because she kept mentioning it. And I was like, is she trying to do like some sort of commentary, social commentary on the usage of cell phones and how it's ruining our society because no one's paying attention anymore because she keeps saying cell phone, phone, cell phone, phone and I'm like, okay, what are we doing? and then it's just not relevant anymore later on 
So I'm confused by this entire introduction, it feels very out of place for the entirety of the book. He was in the wrong, looking casually down at his phone, probably by his side effect of crossing the same street with an, without incident many times before. I glance back toward the accident, carefully not to look directly at the man. The driver of the truck is now at the rear of the vehicle, wide-eyed on a cell phone. Three, maybe four people are assisting them. A few are led by their morbid curiosities, filming the gruesome scene with their phones. Kool-Aid! <laughs> doing? If I were still in Virginia, this would play out in a completely different manner. Everyone around people would stop. Uh, everyone around would stop. Panicking- Ugh, guys. Sorry, I can't read. Who am I to critique someone for writing if I can't even fucking read? Panic would ensue, people would be screaming, a news crew would be on scene in a matter of minutes. But here in Manhattan, a pedestrian struck by a vehicle happens so often is not much more than an inconvenience. A delay in traffic for some, a ruined road for others. I don't know what she's trying to do. Can anyone explain it to me? Again, this is where she meets Jeremy because she was on the way to the meeting with him, unknowingly that it was him. And he comes up to her and he's like come with me, blah, blah, blah. They go to a bathroom in a coffee shop. He um, gives her, her his t-shirt, his clean t-shirt, because hers is full of blood. They introduce themselves to each other while she's washing off the blood. She's like, my mom just died of cancer like two months ago. I haven't been outside the house since today. And he's like, oh, my daughter just drowned like six months ago. Gang, gang. Trauma bond. She's not confused or um, rattled by this, that this random man is helping her. She just kind of accepts it. Peace and love, like, I would never accept help from a man. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> then, after this, they part ways and she, again, goes to the meeting with him, meets him in the elevator. He's like, oh, I have a meeting on the 14th floor. And she's like, oh, me too. And he's like, oh, maybe we're going to the same meeting. And she goes, well, mine starts at 9. And he's like, oh, mine starts at 9.30. But turns out hers also starts at 9.30. And she was lied to by her ex-boyfriend, who's also her agent, who she used to fuck. Who, by the way, also gets completely forgotten about. There are no side characters in this book uh, besides the children, Verity, the main character, and the husband she fucks. <laughs> His name is Jeremy. I don't like that. I don't like the name Jeremy. We get a little flashback to before she enters the meeting, like how she got there. And this, again, the whole first chapters of this book feel vastly different for me from the rest of the book, very disconnected, because they are just written differently. First we have this ridiculous scene with the accident, and then we get this. The aunt was alone, fluttering left and right. Someone's at the door. Aunt was alone, fluttering left and right, up and down, searching for food and friends. He seemed confused by his solitude. Or maybe he was excited for his newfound freedom. I couldn't help but wonder why he was alone. Ants usually travel with an army. We also get the reveal that she doesn't have any friends besides one friend called Natalie that is mentioned offhandedly while she is on her way to the husband to fuck him. No, I'm kidding, but she does fuck him eventually. I don't want you to forget. But she's like, oh, maybe I should text Natalie. I've been neglecting her since my mom died and she was taking care of my mom before that. So she was a little bit busy, you could say. But that's the only time her friend is ever mentioned. And other than that, she doesn't have any friends and neither does the husband who she ends up fucking. I'm not even going to say his name anymore. He doesn't deserve it. She kept me fairly secluded from people outside of school because she was afraid of what I might be capable of during my many sleepwalking episodes. Heh? What does her sleepwalking have to do with having friends? Like, if you're scared she's gonna have an episode when she sleepwalks, then just not allow her to go to sleepovers. But why is she not allowed to meet up with people outside of school? Correlation is non-existent. Overall, I think that Colin Hua was trying to do a lot of different things um, in the book. A lot of different aspects like she really wanted to make the sleepwalking a big thing when at the end of the day it is really not when the sleepwalking eventually obviously this is foreshadowing happens later on in the book it is a very in my opinion and maybe i'm it's just because i'm a hater but it's very anticlimactic and it could have been honestly left out because nothing happens out of it really besides them getting to fuck later on. <laughs> she arrives to the meeting in the t-shirt that Jeremy gave her, the husband she's going to fuck. It says, maybe there's a chance I can pull it off as if wearing men's shirts twice my size is some cool new fashion statement. Alas, Colleen Hoover, believe it or not, it is fashion to wear oversized shirts and clothing even in 2018. But maybe you just didn't know about that because you don't seem to be very um, on trend with anything with your fuck-ass books. Okay. We'll see later on 
again. And it's just confusing to me because she did have editors. In the acknowledgments she says something about this being an indie project, but eventually it did end up being a properly published book, you know? So even if she didn't have an editor before, she would have had one later. She makes it to the meeting and she is meeting with um, Jeremy and two other people that are like agents or something, something of the publishing company and um, oh, what's her name? Lowen. It's, I, don't, I can't remember her name. We should give her a different name. No, actually, don't. I can't remember anything. Owen's agent is also there. Again, they used to be boyfriend-girlfriend and then they broke up. But this, again, has no relevance to anything else besides the beginning, so we don't care. They meet with them. We get classic Colleen Hoover humor because these other two agents enter the room and one of them says, God damn it, Baron, I hear her mumble. And then Colleen Hoover decided to write, I almost smile at the idea of God damn it, Baron actually being his name. And I just don't know what's funny about that. Maybe I, I also don't like Colleen Hoover because I just don't get her like you guys do. <laughs> Some of you guys, not all of you. The woman is dressed more appropriately than I am on my best day with short black hair and lipstick so red. It's a little jarring at 9.30 in the morning. 9.30 is not early in the morning. But what does Colleen Hoover know about time? <laughs> so now we get the plot. One of our authors is unable to fulfill her contract due to medical reasons and we're in search of a writer with experience in the same genre who may be interested in completing the three remaining books in her series. And then they say, it's Verity Crawford and I'm her husband and she wants you because your writing styles are similar. Hmm. I feel like if I were an author and I was writing books, I would not like to read things that were similar to my writing. Because, like, what is it gonna get me? But again, <laughs> Colleen Hoover. She does discuss this in a book, but I'm still gonna do it. She says, oh, you have to disconnect the characters from the author. That's true, but you're writing about an author in a book that you wrote, and you're an author. And so there's going to be a certain level of self-insert there. Like regardless. Anyway, Jeremy tells her that, again, Verity was the one who uh, thought their writing styles were similar, but it turns out later on in the book that he was the one that read her books and thought that, not Verity. She never read any of the main character's books. It was the husband. So that makes you think like, okay, so did he know who she was when they met each other on the street when the, the dude was getting driven over and when he gave her the shirt, did he know when they were in the elevator on the way to the meeting? Did he know? Did he know what she looked like? She, she gave him his name. So he could have guessed. How many people are called low and peace and love? This is never explored further and it's not in the book and it's also not in the epilogue, the bonus chapter that she wrote five, li five years later. Oh, I'm so excited to talk about the bonus chapter after we're done with this. <laughs> she doesn't ask him either. Um, communication is not her thing and neither is it in the epilogue that we'll get later because she keeps wondering things in her head and she just never verbalizes them. <laughs> and it's kind of frustrating because you could just ask him. She is 32, the main character, and the dude is supposed to be in his early 40s. Um, I'm not exactly sure how old, but definitely older. He's a grown man, is what I'm trying to say. And we're on chapter 3. I'm gonna read this uh, paragraph out to you because the only relevance it has is in the beginning of the book. The whole, the whole beginning is disconnected from everything else once she enters the house where they all live in. It seems like Colleen Hoover just forgot everything she wrote in the beginning and was trying to set up for the reader. I had a boyfriend in my early 20s named Amos who liked being choked. It's why we broke up, because I refused to choke him. But sometimes I wonder where I'd be had I entertained his urge. Would, he, would we be married now? Would we have children? Would he have moved on to even more dangerous sexual pervasions? <laughs> Choking is like one of the most harmless things you can do, peace and love. I think that's what worried me the most about uh, with him. In your early 20s, vanilla sex should satisfy a person without the need to introduce fetishes so early on in a relationship. Huh? Is your early 20s not when you become sexually active? for a lot of people and then you try to explore everything there is and then when you're older you know what you like. What the fuck kind of line is that? Arguably Colleen Hoover has met married to her high school sweetheart so maybe she doesn't she just doesn't know. Very confusing to me didn't make any sense again she tries to set this app as like a funny thing where it's like whenever 
the main character is in a bad situation. She's like, at least I'm not with this ex-boyfriend anymore. She does it once on like chapter four and then forgets about it that she tried to do this. So why are we doing it in the first place? I don't know. Her agent visits her after they um, settle on this deal. She agrees to it. And he was like, let's cheer on it. And she gets the vibe that he only came over to fuck. And she's not down for that. And also she saw that he had a girlfriend-ish on social media. And she goes, I read suspect... Like, how's Becca? She goes, asking about the girl. And then... The dude is like, oh my god, what? And she's like, I write suspense novels, Corey. Don't be surprised that I know all about your girlfriend. What does one thing have to do with the other yet again? I don't write suspense novels, but I do know how to use Instagram. So, you know, should I be writing suspense novels? Makes no sense to me. Does it make sense to you or am I being nitpicky? I mean, both probably. <laughs> to get a little self-insert, I'm the awkward writer who posts a picture of my book and says, it's an okay book. There are words in it. Read it if you want. Lynn Hoover is my least favorite millennial, honestly, because <sighs> this main character is a published author already. She makes it a point that she doesn't like being public about it, like she doesn't like going to events and stuff like that and having social media presence, but you're still a published author, so some people are reading your book. It's hard to get a publishing deal. So I don't know why we're trying to pretend like she can't write, why she's trying to make her so quirky and different. Quirky and different is good for the main character. We'll talk about it more in a second. Actually, we can talk about it right now. She goes to the house to live with the family, as I mentioned. Verity is in a comatose state. I don't really know the right term for it. She is um, just not functioning. Like, she has her eyes open, she can eat and everything, but she can't do anything herself. She's not realizing stuff. She's not talking, she's not walking, she's not reacting. She's just there. But she isn't there, you know what I mean? And they have a nurse, but Jeremy also takes care of her. For the most part. I think. Verity hangs out in her room, not doing anything because she can't. Or can she? We'll find out. Lowen is spending time in her office to try to figure out if she wrote down any notes for the remaining books in the series that she's supposed to finish. And instead she finds a manuscript. But before she finds that, or maybe she already did, but alas, she's hungry. And Jeremy's like, oh, I have leftovers. I have some pizza. Do you want some pizza? Um, and she's like, yeah, it's perfect. And then the next line is, I hate pizza. Hmm. The only people that say they hate, hate pizza are people who are trying to be quirky when they're in their teenage years. Other than that, I've never met anyone who was like, I hate pizza. People don't like pizza. <laughs> Right? Like, that's that exists, and that's allowed to exist. But no one would outright say, I fucking hate pizza. I hate it. Why does she hate pizza? This is not elaborated up on, again, just a random line she throws in. I hate Colleen Hoover. Oh my god. I write suspense novels. I know when there are suspicious situations, comma. Suspicious people almost always accompany those situations. First of all, okay, we get it. You're right, but you're not good at it. I know when there are suspicious situations, comma, suspicious people almost always accompany those situations. First of all, you should have used and instead of a comma. Second of all, double suspicious, suspicious, also weird. Also, isn't that just common knowledge? <laughs> Alas, as I just mentioned, she finds um, her manuscript, Verity's manuscript. And this is kind of where the whole thriller part comes in because Verity wrote a autobiography and it's called So Be It. And she details in that how she met Jeremy. First of all, that's where the auto, auto, I can't say it. Where the autobiography starts when she meets Jeremy, her husband, which would imply that she didn't have a life before him, which is very feministic of her, of course. Love him, love Jeremy. Honestly, Jeremy, Jeremy is the most mediocre, minimum standard man you will ever meet. We'll talk more about it. And I just don't... I don't fuck with him. Like, I don't get why we want to fuck him. That's what I'm trying to say. In this manuscript, it's just sex. There's... Verity is just writing about sex. My favorite part of this 
manuscript is I congratulate him with a blowjob it was the first time I swallowed that's how happy I was to see him I had no idea how much there would be how long I would have to continue swallowing keeping my composure was uh, tough while his dick was in my throat drowning me and then she goes and pukes in the toilet what do I care? For a lot of these scenes, and you could argue sex scenes in general, I don't understand what they are doing for the plot. I don't understand why I need to know that he has, like, a huge load of cum. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I, what do I care as Serena? This is giving me anything. What? Huh? In the manuscript, a Verity comes across, um... <laughs> not comes across, she writes it in a way where she's utterly obsessed with Jeremy with her own body and she does not want to have children because it will ruin her body and then she will be jealous of the children because Jeremy will love them more than her. And so the main character Lowen is reading all of this over the course of the book and is growing to resent Verity for all of what she's writing and also she's falling in love with Jeremy at the same time because she's reading about him and how great he is and how sexy and hot he is. I don't even know what he looks like. I think it's also very bold to um, say that Verity is the best author ever when the main character and also the husband have never read any of her books by the way um, and then sharing her autobiography with the reader where we are actively reading like um lines from the auto or like scenes from the autobiography the chapters is what i'm trying to say and it's supposedly from the greatest author suspense author of all time the stephen king in this book and it just reads the exact same as when it's a normal chapter hmm hmm allegedly verity is as i mentioned like not aware of her surroundings because she got in a car accident. I didn't even say. She got in a car accident. She crashed her car against a tree and uh, then like had a swelling in her brain and since then she's been in this stain. She's watching Verity with her nurse outside because they're doing something outside and then the nurse leaves to get something from the inside and leaves Verity outside and Lowen is sitting in her office and looking outside <laughs> watching them and she's in her head thinking about something and when she looks back at the scene she sees that Verity is looking at her and she's like oh that's kind of scary. I think this is the first incident where she becomes suspicious of Verity because she's like oh she definitely looked at me even though her eyes didn't follow me she absolutely looked at me like she's conscious like she's just pretending and of course her reading the manuscript is kind of feeding into those delusions or are they delusions no they're not she's conscious she's just pretending I can, I can tell you right now she's reading about how Verity is in reality in this autobiography like such a terrible person and who hates her children because they, Jeremy her husband loves them more than her and then she's like okay so it's not far off that she will pretend to be what is what state is she in? What is the word for it? I don't know. Also, her last name is Ashley. Like, not Ashley Tisdale, but Ashley, like, Lee. Like, how you would make fun. I'm sorry if that's your name, but, like, you know, people make fun of that. It's her last name. It's kind of weird to me. The entire book, from this point onward, is just the chapters of the manuscript featuring her like thinking that Verity moved but not being able to prove it featuring her wanting to fuck Jeremy really badly and him wanting to fuck her also but obviously he's still married <laughs> so that would be a little bit awkward and that's how the entire book progresses there is nothing more happening you don't really if I, I me personally I don't want to say you me personally I didn't connect with any of the characters again Jeremy to me is the bare minimum of a man and we'll talk about that right now but also Lowen is just not interesting there is nothing interesting about her she's this quirky author who's shit at writing but also a published author who is overtaking this role as Verity's ghostwriter because apparently she's not that bad has no friends has no personality except that she hates pizza and wants to fuck a married man so I don't really know who I'm rooting for right now. And knowing Jeremy, he probably purchased them for Verity a few times. He seems like the type of husband who wouldn't think twice about it. What do you think she's talking about? What is, what is she referring to? He probably purchased them for Verity a few times. Tampons. I love a 40-year-old man who's not afraid to buy tampons for his wife. 
we doing? And then she goes, he was probably, no, that was Verity actually. Verity in her manuscript goes, he was probably going to be the type of dad to change their diapers. Oh my god, you're doing the bare minimum, Jeremy. I love you. What the fuck? What is he doing that has them all obsessed with him? Because through reading the manuscript again, Lowen also gets obsessed with him. Because Verity is writing it like, oh my god, he's the hottest man ever, he fucks me so good. And she's like, oh, I kind of want to know what that's all about. Hmm. While in the grocery store, they meet some friends of Verity's or whatever. And one of them actually has an affair. And Jeremy knows about this. And he goes... Well, the lady goes, tell Verity, and this is, you have to remember this for the epilogue, this interaction, or that this person exists. Tell Verity I said hello, and we hope she's recovering well, because no one actually knows that, she, like, what state she's in. They think she's doing okay, but she's obviously not, or she is, but she's pretending she's not. I'll share the message, Jeremy says, walking past her. Give my best to Sherman. Patricia makes a face. My husband's name is William, Jeremy nods once. Oh, that's right, I get them confused. I say, um, who is Sherman? And then he goes, the guy she fucks behind her husband's back. I look at him, shocked. He's smiling. Holy shit, I say, laughing. When we get to the register, I can't stop smiling. I don't know that I've ever seen that kind of epic burn in person. That kind of epic burn. Epic burn. Oh, man. Also, you are coming for a woman having an affair when you are literally about to fuck someone else while you're married. So what are we doing? Fuck women is the message of this book. We're 40% in and she still keeps talking about that the fact that the most exhilarating part of Verity's writing is the fact that she writes from the villain's point of view. And this is so crucial to nothing because she keeps saying it. I actually have to look up how many times because it was, well, it was also just in the first half, but she keeps going, I'm not sure how much longer I can try to convince myself that I don't have a serious crush on that man. Okay, I didn't mean that to work. Okay, whatever. I'm also not sure how much longer I can try to convince myself that Verity is a better person than she really is. I think after reading every book in her series, I'm beginning to understand the reason her suspense novels do so well. Is a suspense novel not just a thriller? Just write thriller. The reason her suspense novels do so well is because of how she writes them from the villain's point of view. Critics love that about her. And I get it! You know what I mean? And to think she's already written six of these novels are from the villain's point of view. All her books are from the villain's point of view. So that's new to me in the same chapter, by the way. It was fascinating seeing how Verity always writes from the antagonist's point of view. In, I'm beginning to think Verity writes from a villainous point of view because she's a villain. <sighs> Man. Or should I stick to the same formula of writing from the villain's point of view that made my first novel so successful? Can you shut the fuck up? I fucking get it. Does she think I'm a dumbass? I feel like when I'm- because when I keep reading lines like that over and over again, I feel like the author thinks I'm dumb. Like, I can't retain information. I know that she writes from the villain's point of view. You've told me like five times already. Why are we saying it again? Like, you're, this is the first time of you telling me, bitch. She's struggling so hard with the whole story. Um, and to me, because she hadn't read them before she came to the house, she hadn't read the books, she read them while she was there. And to me, it's just like, why aren't you googling why aren't you googling? You could just- there's no- there's sites where you have the entire plot listed and she does google in this book so it does exist. <laughs> it makes me wonder because Verity also supposedly is someone who loved being famous and loved giving interviews and stuff like that. She was probably interviewed about her future books. Just look up that because she can't find any notes on them. She's like, I don't know what to do. Also one time the son, because there's still a son, the other two, they had twins before that they are dead. But the son is still alive and she hears um, him scream in Verity's room and so she goes to look after him and there's a knife in the room on the floor and he cut himself and Verity is staring at Lowen and she's like what the fuck is going on I'm so scared I'm so scared and then he has to take him to the hospital I think or not but she can't find the knife anymore she's like there was a knife there was literally a knife on the floor but where did it go and in my head I was like okay so Verity put it in the floorboard because like People always put shit in the floorboard in books. Does anyone actually put shit into floorboards in real life? Or is that just like a book thing and a movie thing? <laughs> of course, she does have a sleepwalking episode while she is in the um, house with the family because it was teased in the first chapter or second or third chapter. So now we have to bring it back up. 
And the only thing that happens is her sleepwalking into Verity's room and waking up on top of her bed. <laughs> and that's it. Nothing happens. But this is how she reveals it to Jeremy, which yet again, you're a grown woman. I'm unsure of what is holding you back from just talking to this man. And she tells him, like, um, that's why I wanted a lock on the door, because there wasn't one before. Because I'm scared of um, what I could do if I sleepwalk. Because apparently when she was a child, she, like, broke her wrist and then woke up in the morning with a broken wrist and blood all over her. And she didn't remember from the night before. But I feel like it's just, like, not that big of a deal, if I'm being honest, because, like, nothing else happened, apparently, besides this one incident. And since then, since she was five years old, she's now 32, nothing else has happened, and she's still scared. I don't get it. So, as I said, she wakes up in Verity's bed in the middle of the night, she freaks out, she reveals everything, and then Jeremy's like, do you want me to put a lock outside of your door that you can't open, and then I'll just close it when you go to bed and I'll open it when you wake up. And she's like, I would actually really like that. Psychopath. So to me, the whole sleepwalking thing is just not that big of a deal. I don't know about you guys. I feel like she was trying to edit in because she somehow needed an excuse to put a lock outside of the door, but also it didn't play big enough of a role, which justifies its existence. Its existence. Okay. I'm exhausted from last night. I'm unsettled. But I try not to think about last night. Last night, back to back. Okay. <laughs> She's been staying with him for maybe like two weeks. Also, I want to say that I don't really get how she is pushing through reading this entire manuscript. She reads every chapter and there's a lot of them. And for me, it was just a little bit odd because there's this mystery going on where Everyone is suspecting that Verity is the one that killed one of the daughters after, because they were twins, one of them died of an allergic reaction to a peanut and the other one was drowned or drowned on her own and everyone suspects that it was Verity who actually drowned her and, you know, why didn't she just skip to the end of the manuscript? She reads it chapter after chapter after chapter and I'm like, just skip forward bitch i don't get it why are we reading the sex scenes the whole time <laughs> he's in love it is confessed in the manuscript that she killed one of the daughters again the first one died because of a peanut allergy and she actually only fucked with that daughter oh, according to the manuscript she was like oh i only ever loved the first daughter because you know i don't know i had a dream that the other one was gonna kill her and so since then i loved her and then the other one who's actually autistic, but they keep using the term Asperger's and as far as I'm concerned, that's outdated. <laughs> and I'm not sure if it was outdated in 2018, but I'm, I'm guessing it was. So I'm not sure why we're using it. It's like, oh, I loved her differently. Or the, I think it's Jeremy who says, I loved her differently because she couldn't express emotions. And that's why I just didn't give her the attention or I gave her different attention. It's like, okay, just because your child is autistic doesn't mean they need less attention. Just because they can't express emotions doesn't mean they deserve them from you. Odd. So the second daughter, the autistic one, according to the manuscript, Verity hated. And so she took them out one day, the daughter and the son that is born at this point, and put them in a canoe and then tipped the canoe over and only saved the son out of the water and let the other child drown because she couldn't swim and she got tangled in a fishing net and that's the cover it's like a fishing net i think i think the cover is low-key ugly but i'm guessing that's what it's supposed to be in the manuscript it says i hated her so i killed her because i wanted to get jeremy's attention back because at the end of the day like she doesn't fuck with her children according to the manuscript she wants the whole attention from jeremy and she's jealous of the kids she doesn't want them and um after that one kid that she actually like died, he was so upset over it. She was like, if I kill the other child, he's gonna give me more attention again. And that's allegedly why she did it. Um, okay, great plan. Love that. After this incident, Jeremy does get suspicious of her because he's like, why did you tell our son to hold his breath when we were, when you were out on the lake? Because she was the one who tipped over the canoe and the son told the dad, she told me to hold my breath before we were tipping over. And so he's like, why the fuck did you do that? Did you drown our, ch our child, our artistic child? 
that you didn't love because she was autistic. <laughs> and she's like, no, I didn't. I didn't do that. And everyone just believes her. Uh, okay. After this, basically, Lowen decides it's time to fuck Jeremy. It's been long enough. It's been like four weeks, maybe, that she stayed with him at the house. Maximum, maximum four weeks. At least it's two weeks. Maximum is four. She is just so horny for this man. After reading about all the sex scenes with his wife, she's like, I gotta give it to him. I need to give him that sloppy toppy. And so they make out on the couch and almost do it, but she sees Verity on top of the stairs. And she's like, oh my god, it's Verity, it's Verity. Verity's right there. And Jeremy's like, bitch, you're lying. And they go upstairs and Verity is in bed asleep. And so she's like, oh my god, I'm hallucinating. I'm seeing things. I don't know what to do. I don't know who I am. The thing is, for me... I don't get disturbed reading things and I also don't get, like, I just don't get thrillers and I don't get horror books, okay? Like, I, this is just a personal preference for me. I don't get scared from books and I don't feel the suspense from books because to me it was very, maybe also just because it's Colleen Hoover, it was very evident what was going to happen and that that bitch was actually alive. Because she's trying to make you, like, wonder along with the main character. Uh, well, of course she's alive, but it, she's conscious, you know? She's trying to make you wonder with the main character, oh, is uh, she hallucinating or is Verity actually doing these things and playing with them? Uh, with the manuscript and everything, it's supposed to be eerie, it's supposed to be suspenseful! Oh my god, it's a suspense novel! She writes suspense novels, yeah, don't worry about it. But at the end of the day, um, it's very evident that we're not going anywhere with this book. It's just Colleen Hoover at the end of the day, you know what I mean? It's Put the pen down. I lift my head to watch him, but my blood runs cold when my eyes are pulled to the figure standing at the top of the stairs. She's just standing there, watching her husband as his mouth roams over my breast. My entire body stiffens beneath Jeremy. Barity's fists clench at her sides before she rushes back in the direction of her room. Hmm. Great writing. When they fuck in the bed for the first time, because she's actually sleeping in their old bedroom, they all moved upstairs with Verity, whatever, it doesn't really matter, but she's sleeping in the master bedroom, so that's also where they have sex. I bite down on the wood in front of me. I can feel Verity's teeth marks beneath mine. Different, unaligned with my own. I bite harder into her wood as I come, determined to leave deeper marks than she ever did. Determined to think only of Jeremy and me every time I look at this headboard in the future. psychotic. Well, biting the headboard, I would never think of that. Like, who does? Peace and love if you've done it, like, you don't have to say, but who does that? And then Verity had been doing that, it also said in the manuscript, like, oh my god, I bite the headboard. Now she's biting the headboard. Can we stop biting the headboard? Get a fucking gag or some shit like that. Why are we not being resourceful? Anyway, she bites it harder, so don't worry about it. Verity is out of the picture. They are having Blissful sex. And I want you to keep in mind that the way the sex is described right here is... It's really good. It's really good and they do it multiple times. Okay? Keep that in mind just for something later. Um, there's nothing bad about the sex. It's really good. Oh, she's really good. She deserves to be with someone who will put her love for his children before anything else. I pull the pillow off my face and place it under my hips, lifting them so that everything he just left inside me doesn't seep out. Why doesn't this make it to the list of worst Colleen Hoover quotes ever? Ew. I'm seated at the kitchen table, eating Ritz crackers and peanut butter, staring at Crew as he plays on his iPad. What are you playing? I ask him. Toy Blast. At least it's not Fallout or Grand Theft Auto. There's hope for him yet. Lee Hoover has three children, and I think they're all sons. One of them being alleged of sexual assault. Um, you know. <laughs> oh, I don't know why she doesn't know that you can play Fallout or GTA on the tablet. Those are console games. Surely you can play some version of them. At least GTA on your iPad, but it's not gonna be... It's not what she's trying to do. <laughs> not sure why she wrote that down. Now we're at the end of the book. Can you believe it? Like, nothing happened in this entire book. Again, it's Colleen. Basically what happens is uh, the, the dude, the son, gets hurt and they have to go to the hospital. Um, but only Jeremy goes with him and Lowen stays behind with Verity. She doesn't trust that bitch anymore because she has had a few incidents with her where she's moved and she's like, I don't believe that she is comatose or anything. She is fully conscious and just pretending because she also finished the manuscript it did say at the end of the manuscript, I guess I just 
uh, crash, I could just crash my car into a tree. And so she did have a car crash and she's like, okay, so that was self-induced. She just wanted the attention. She's doing this for attention from Jeremy. Um, I'm going to get a baby monitor and like set it up and watch her. And then at one point she moves and she does film it. But then the phone falls to the ground when she runs upstairs to catch her. And I'm not sure if she got anything on the phone, but I think she did. That was my takeaway from the scene. Like, she did film her off the baby monitor moving. So where's that clip? Where's the clip at? Jeremy comes home, finds her in the room, like, yelling at Verity to move and to stop pretending. And he's like, what are you fucking doing? Like, you're genuinely unhinged. And she tells him, no, she is just pretending. He doesn't believe her. So she gives him the manuscript at this point. Because the whole time she's been keeping it a secret that she's been reading this about the murder of his daughter... And she's like, no, here, believe me. And then he, he goes to read it and he's like, we gotta kill that bitch. They go to kill the bitch by choking her on her own vomit. Because then she's like, he's like, I'm gonna kill you right now. And then she's like, <gasps> I'm actually alive. I actually know everything that's going on. But le please let me speak. Like, I need to tell you why I did everything. And he's like, no, I won't. Tries to choke her and then... Lowen is like, no, don't choke her. They'll know you murdered her. We have to find a better way. Chokes her um, on her own vomit, like pushes her nose closed while she chokes on her own vomit. And then she dies and they're like, let's just pretend we found her like that in the morning. Everyone believes them. Everyone believes them that this is what happened and uh, they live happily ever after. Or do they? Because we're getting to the epilogue soon. They revisit the home for some reason because... We get a time skip to seven months ahead. First of all, Lowen is pregnant because he did come inside her. Not sure why they're all so fertile that they all just the first time, or maybe he's super fertile or they're super fertile, I don't know, that they all just immediately get pregnant. We go back into the room, or it's just Lowen who goes back into the room because the son says, oh, I forgot something in there and it's like a bunch of drawings. And she's like, the room was completely empty. Where did you get that from? And then she figures out that there's a floorboard that can't be moved yet again. We love floorboards. And she moves it to the side and finds a letter. And this is the letter that is like the big plot twist at the end of the book. It's a letter from Verity to Jeremy. Their names are really similar. Verity to Jeremy, but just because of the Y at the end, whatever. <laughs> Verity writes down very detailed on why she did everything. And what the fuck is up with the manuscript. Because apparently... Jeremy had read this manuscript before, where it's detailed how she killed the daughter and everything. And this isn't the first time he read it when Lowen gave it to him. He just pretended like it was. This is not talked about again. They don't pick up on this again. She doesn't ask Jeremy about it because she doesn't reveal to him that she found this letter, right? Um, she just has to go along with it because she does destroy the letter after she reads it. But basically it says that... Verity just wrote this manuscript, this autobiography, to, like, as a writing exercise. <laughs> her editor apparently told her, if you want to write from the villain's point of view, you need to become the villain in real life. And you need to, like, write about your life as a villain. Like, kind of opposite thing? Opposite day? I'm not sure. <laughs> she was dramatizing everything in her manuscript, in her autobiography. They refer to it either way, by the way. That's why I'm doing it, too. Writing about, like, um... How much resentment she felt and everything she's supposed to like make it up and then she's like in the letter oh that was not true like it was just a writing essay like i would never kill our daughters i love them i love our children i love you i love our children it was just a writing exercise but at one point jeremy did find that manuscript as it was open on the laptop or something and he read it and he obviously didn't know it was a writing exercise because for some reason Verity didn't think if it's true, you know, that's like the mystery. Is it true? What is the truth? Is the manuscript the truth or is the letter the truth? You have to figure it out for yourself. But uh, why wouldn't she write a disclaimer in the beginning? Like, this is just a writing exercise. She wrote a whole intro, a whole author's note. Like, this is going to disturb you. This is going to be so vile. It's going to stick with you. You're going to cry. You're going to scream. Why don't you write? Oh, and by the way, this isn't real. This is just a writing exercise. Could have prevented this whole thing but obviously as i just said the reader is supposed to not know what is the truth is the autobiography the truth is she really like a really terrible person who killed her daughter and hates her children or is the letter that she wrote to jeremy the truth that she hit under the floorboard 
uh, where she writes she wanted to run away with the sun and she is sorry for everything and then what's also really weird is in that letter she details how she came to be in this state because obviously now you're gonna be like oh she didn't try to get into car crash herself no allegedly it was jeremy who put her in a car without a seat belt and then drove the car into a tree and disappeared <laughs> he just ran away so she's alleging in that letter that jeremy was the one who tried to kill her after reading the manuscript because he was so angry with her and that she really was in a like comatose state while her brain was swollen but she eventually woke up and just didn't know how to get out of the situation so she kept pretending to be in a in that state basically now what do i think about it i don't really know i don't really think when i read <laughs> and colleen hoover doesn't really think when she writes so we're like this but i think it's so weird because this letter is dedicated to jeremy that she is writing like in prolific detail what happened like, you found the manuscript, and then you drove the car into a tree, you didn't have a seatbelt on, you tried to choke me. I think he knows if he was dead, he was doing that. Why is she being so detailed about it? Doesn't make sense. I'm not sure what else she could have done in her situation, like waking up and like how she could have gone about the situation. She was like, I opened a checkings account while you were fucking the other girl in the room, and I locked the lock from outside. Uh... Thankfully, it was there because of her sleepwalking, because she could do that. And I wanted to run away with our son, but whatever. That's how the book ends. <laughs> so, you're obviously not missing out. You can tell me your opinion on what you think is the truth, whether she killed her children, whether she didn't kill her children, and it was truly an accident, the drowning was an accident, is what she said in the letter. Uh, I don't really know, I don't really care. But I do have to say that I don't fuck with Jeremy. And at the end of the day, I do think that Jeremy, honestly, was the issue. And the thing is, like, this is so anti-women. <laughs> it is anti-women. The entire book is. And we're uplifting this random-ass man that I don't even know what he looks like. When it turns out... And again, this is not discussed by the main character. She doesn't really wonder about this. The fact that he has read the manuscript before, but still kept caring for Verity when she was in that state, when she because she didn't die. He kept taking care of her instead of killing her again, and then he pretended that he's reading this manuscript for the first time. So what's going on? The thing is, I don't think that Colleen Hoover thought about this that much when she was writing the book originally, and that she only started thinking about it once the book was published. Because again, it was published in 2018, and 2022 is when she released a bonus chapter. Maybe this book was re-edited, republished, I'm not sure, but she added a bonus chapter, and it's pretty long, and a lot happens in it. My favorite part... <laughs> It happens three months after their daughter is born because again as I mentioned at the end of the book um, Lowen is pregnant by his by Jeremy and uh, the death was ruled an accident and they moved and they now live happily ever after or do they. Basically uh, she keeps going uh, in circles in her mind where she compares everything to Verity. She's going a little bit insane where she's like oh Verity did this so I'm doing that blah 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 like she can't really escape it especially because she is so conflicted on what the truth is with the letter uh that she destroyed she never told Jeremy about it also I have to say uh I think this epilogue was written so many years later or this bonus chapter was written so many years later after Colleen Hoover had heard everything that everyone had to say about it and then she wrote it I don't think this was an original idea or did she originally wrote it back when she wrote the book uh Colleen Hoover strikes me allegedly as the kind of author that would add things into her book or change things uh according or to please readers peace and love like it's kind of like Jennifer Armentrout she's gotten in a lot of hot water because she's changed things around to please her readers and I think that allegedly maybe Colleen Hoover could be doing the same because I don't think this would have stemmed from herself because this reads quite differently than the end of the book right and so for me the book is kind of like the beginning is its own entity then the entire rest of the book is its own entity and the epilogue is a whole different thing they all all three parts of that read completely different there's no consistency honestly i feel like i'm just yapping a lot and i'm not saying anything but basically my favorite part was she's comparing herself to verity she's like verity wrote about this prolific sex life that they were having sex multiple times and our sex is just good we're going back to the headboard biting she was writing the sex was phenomenal she could not believe it and they were having like three times doing it three times that night 
Well, apparently, in present day, Colleen Hoover forgot about it because now they're only doing it like once a night and not all night long. And so she's insecure about that. She's like, he doesn't fuck me. He only makes love to me. You're a grown woman. He's a grown man. Talk to him about sexual preferences. I don't fucking get it. Like, I can't take you seriously. Sorry. Very weirdly, they were laying in bed and they just had sex. And then he goes, can I suck your nipple? Because there's milk leaking out of it. And she's like, sure. And then he sucks her nipple. Sucks the milk out of her nipple. Um, and he's like, that was so yummy. <laughs> mm, I have a few more things to say. As I mentioned, the epilogue or this extra bonus chapter, extra bonus is the same thing, okay, is uncharacteristically unhinged compared to the end of the book and the way that the main character was thinking in the book. She gets self-conscious about the fact that she's now pregnant or she was pregnant, the baby is born and her body looks different. She's like, oh my god. Verity was so hot. She wrote in her manuscript how she uh, got her ba uh, baby body gone, how she like how she bounced back so quickly. My body can't bounce back. And then she writes, "I bought some Victoria's Secret lingerie, a size up, which is the last punch in Verity's flat, firm stomach." That bitch is dead. Anyway, of course you're wondering, like, is it just them fucking this epilogue? No, actually. We do get them fucking, but we also get them um, killing another woman. Yeah. <laughs> Remember earlier when I told you that they went to a grocery store to get tampons because he's just so great of a man? And they met a, fem like a friend of Verity's and called her out for having an affair. And it was an epic burn. <laughs> It was an epic burn. They meet her after having moved from wherever they lived before to out of state, like farther away. So nobody knows who they are. So they couldn't get in any trouble if anything came up. They meet this lady at the beach walking her dog. And she is like highly suspicious, understandably so, of this entire situation. Because she's like, no one's seen you since your wife died. Now you have a new wife with a baby. Hmm, this is kind of weird. Jeremy, while this conversation is happening, is on a run. He makes it back just in time for the end of this conversation and then is like, get the child in the car. I'm going to take care of it. And then he drowns that woman. He drowns her in the ocean. Or in the lake for that matter, because I don't know where they are. But it's a, like the second drowning that's happening in the story. Super weird that this was the thing that she decided to go with in the bonus chapter, drowning the random woman from the grocery store. Alas, it is Colleen Hoover, as we know, and honestly, I'm not surprised by anything she does. And then after this drowning, Lowen realizes, like, he just did that with no remorse and no issue. Maybe he is a little bit of a psychopath. Like, maybe I should be a little scared of him. And they go back to the house and she's conflicted in her mind. And then she's like, okay, I don't want to die. So I have to make him believe that I support him killing women. Bitch, you didn't have an issue before. I don't know what the issue is now. She gives him a blowjob in the shower and then they live happily ever after. And he finally, like, really you know, does it with her, because before that she was complaining that they only make love and they don't fuck. Kind of like Christian Grey, but now they do it like Christian Grey, they do fuck. And that's how it ends, with her being like, oh my god, I'm married to an actual insane dude. But honestly, like, again, I have to say, I don't know who I'm supposed to be rooting for in this book, because every character is terrible. And that's usually the norm with Colleen Hoover books, but I just don't know... I just don't get what the point is. <laughs> Book is over, um, epilogue is over, we're left with the question, was Verity lying in her manuscript? Was it the truth? Is Jeremy the villain? If Jeremy is the villain, I think that's something Colleen Hoover thought of after the fact, and that's why she wrote the bonus chapter, because people were saying like, oh my god, Jeremy is so sussy, and then she was like, yeah, he is right, I'm gonna write an epilogue to prove them right, because that's a good idea. I don't know, you have to let me know what you think. If you've read Verity, uh, I just don't care enough to, like, uh, burn any more brain cells thinking about it, if I'm being honest. <laughs> this is definitely a book that you should miss out on. It's not even the book where I'm like, you should read it yourself to figure out what you think. There's nothing more to it. Like, it's just, it's just worse, even worse when you read it, you know? Because I left out some things, but they're all bad things, so... <laughs> Can't wait to see this on the big screen. Colleen cast me as... Mm, who do I want to be? 
the woman that gets drowned. Other than that, guys, I hope you still enjoyed this video. Honestly, Verity was way less exciting than people made it out to be, and I'm very disappointed because I just thought it was going to be better than this. Thank you again to all of my book haters for becoming members of my channel and supporting me, but also just thank you if you're not a book hater and still watching. That's very nice of you. I hope you stay happy, you stay healthy, peace and love, and hopefully I'll see you in my next video. Bye-bye!